Hi, you're on the Red Zone Show. I'm we, Roscoe, this is Mark. So today we're the Red Zone Show? Yeah, today. <laughs> I mean, this may change. We're going to tell you how to optimize your loads, how to make more money and be more profitable. But first, you want to know, what's the Red Zone? Well, it, when you're... When you wake up in the morning and your truck is empty, um, you want to have whoever's dispatching your truck push you into zones that are red. And, and red is, we're looking at a DAT board or a truck stop board, and red is where the ratio of freight is far more than the ratio of truckers. Freight to truck, that's what you want to be looking at. More freight, more money. Right, There, you want more more freight, less trucks that's Where, right wherever you go you want it to be more freight available at to less trucks right well, one of the strategies uh, if i've got to get somebody say down to atlanta i i oftentimes push them towards chicago because chicago is a big inbound state and they have a lot of freight that goes right down to atlanta uh, and you know in our future videos we've talked about you can chase money or you can chase destinations. Today we're going to talk about chasing money. Well, that's how you make more money, right? Yes. So when you're doing your strategy of where do I want to go next, we want to go into an area where the market conditions are greater for the truck driver than the broker. So this takes a little thought, um, if I'm thinking right now. Right? Because, you, yeah, you might get a good load. You might get a load with, say, uh fifteen hundred dollars for a thousand miles or whatever it might be and but if it's going to a place where there's no freight to take out of there then what happens you're going to sit there you're going to spend money on a hotel room right. you're going to wait for a load wait. to get you out of there wait. you're not going to make as much money <laughs> as if you thought about where to take a load first. Right? I'd rather take, a, sh right? yeah, I'd rather take right. a shorter load going into an area that's exactly. hot right. than a long load. Right. And sometimes you've got to take a, a load that's not optimal to get into a place that is optimal. I'm going to show you a picture of the... the, the Good. Show this them is what a the DAT, red zone looks like. Uh, market conditions board. Now, it, it, you may have a DAT board, um, but if you're spending the $12.95 a month, you're not getting this data. Um, up your ante with DAT. Learn these strategies. You're going to make a lot more money. These load boards, DAT, truck stop, they work hard. They put a ton of research, a ton of analytics into this. And it changes all the time, right? It can change hour to hour, right? It, it, it does. It changes yeah, every hour. Right. See, where you see the blue and the red, Sometimes it's where the blue is, it's red, and sometimes where the red is, it's blue. It, it can change. Right, and red yeah. meaning it's the, the loads are much higher than the trucks. Right. Now, this is a snapshot of 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. the, the golden zone for freight is between 10 a.m. and about 12, 1 o'clock. Oh, the golden zone. You've talked about that before. Sure. What, what that is is when a lot of trucks get loaded and they get to a delivery... And they're not available for freight. There may be a lot of trucks in the area, but if they're all loaded, they're not available for freight. And that puts the ratio at, for the loads way up. As these trucks get unloaded, it brings the available trucks up and it rechanges the balance of the load to truck ratio. So you want to have your dispatcher focusing on getting you loads between that 10 and 12, 8 and 12 o'clock mark. The golden zone. Okay. Yeah, and uh, an ideal scene is you're getting your truck unloaded first thing in the morning. By afternoon, you're physically loading your truck. and you, With your new load. Yes. Yeah. And you're getting to your destination, getting your clock reset, and getting the freight off your truck first thing in the morning. If you can run that cycle three, four times a week, you're going to make a lot more money than you would if you were trying to drive from east to west coast. The money's not necessarily in the miles. It's being in the right place and focusing. So what I've done is I've, I've got two markets pulled up on this board here. And I pulled two loads from that market. So I'm going to give you a, a solid example. Now this video we're going to focus on the 
$1,500. Our next video that when we breach this subject again, what I'm going to do is focus on the miles. Okay, so we use the 1500 as the benchmark. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Again, this is 2 o'clock, and I've got the board here in front of me. And you can see that it, towards the south, in the, especially towards the southeast, that's where the biggest need for trucks is. When there's a big need for trucks, that means they're going to probably begin to pay more. So Better rates for freight. We keep saying that phrase, and that's what it is in the red zone. That's right. So I looked at a load in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio is not a red zone. I looked at a load in, um, where was that load? Where did I put it? Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina. So we're going to compare Columbia, South Carolina to Cleveland, Ohio. Let's take a look. So... If you look at, these are two offers that were physically on the board at 2 o'clock. Canton, Ohio, going to Norfolk, New York. This is, the, this is the first load they had that paid $1,500. Remember, that was my mark. So you pick up in Canton, you go up to Norfolk, New York. It's, the trip is 522 miles, and they were offering $1,500. That's a good load, right? It's not a bad load. Huh. But there's two problems. There's better load. Right. Right? And when what happens when you get to Norfolk, Virginia? That's or Norfolk, we, that's what New we York. want to know, yeah. So let's pull that board up again. Where did it go? It completely map, disappeared. Where, <laughs> where'd the red zone go? I don't know. Let's see what we're doing here. I don't there know how it disappeared on me. We got it. But that New York was way up here in New York. In the I, blue zone. When I do comparisons and, and whatnot, I never go over the bridge. Um, I I don't put semis over the the, the bridge. You mean into New York City. Absolutely. Right. Um, I've driven in New York City. That's why you don't do it. It's not fun. Too many. If, if a driver loves New York and wants to go there, God bless them, I'll send them there. Um, but... When I'm doing comparisons and stuff, I'm going to assume you don't want to go to New York City with a 53-foot long trailer. And that's what I'm comparing is a van to a van, 53-foot dry van to 53-foot dry van. So that Ohio run is going back up into New York, which is not where I would send a truck. So I'm going to bring this back up again. Let's just get rid of this. Canton, Ohio, New York, 522 miles, pays $1,500. At 287, okay, it is, it's okay for Cleveland market. But if you woke up in Charleston, South Carolina, and you were going to get freight, the first $1,500 load comes up is 262 miles. And that's going to Georgia. So Georgia is a hot zone. That's a red zone. So we go from hot red zone to red zone. That means we're going from higher money to higher money. If we can continue in that red zone and focus on loads going to and from red zone to red zone, you're going to make a lot more money. Potentially, you'll make an extra $100,000 a year. 100000 A year. <laughs> Yow. Because if you're making an extra three, dollars $400 a day, that adds up. You know, this is worth considering here, uh, even if you have to pay extra for the DAT, the, the special board. Yes. It's well worth it if you can find, or, you know, you got to have somebody find, if not your, uh, your dispatcher, find these loads in the red zone. That's right. So look at this one here, this load on the right. It's 262 miles. Same $1,500. That... Brings us to 572 a mile. There, that freight's out there. 500 or 572 cent a mile freight. And and now there's two things that, multiple things, but two things that stand out the most. 
If you're going 200 miles less, it fuels right now, what, $12, $14 a gallon? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it is ridiculous, right? Yeah, it's very ridiculous. So, and it may stay that way for a while. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you've got to figure out how to make more money with less miles. If we're, good, if we're paying 80 cents a mile, you're going to save $200 in fuel on the load going from Carolina to Georgia. So by doing fewer miles is a few things. Number one, it's easier on the driver. You get to bed sooner. You get to chill out and breathe a little sooner. You know, that's pretty good thinking. More money, less miles. You're not or burning less, the tires less over money, oil. More, more, more less, money, more money, less, less work. miles. Yeah. Less work. Yeah. If you could do less. How is it the people that make the most money usually seem to do the least amount of work? Well, it hasn't worked for me. I do nothing and make nothing. But, uh, but we're, right. we're going to teach yeah, them how to, that's to what work we're less here for. and make that's more. That's what we're here for. Because remember our strategy is this. If you can get freight off your truck in the morning, early, and get freight on the truck in the afternoon, get to your destination, get your hours back, get the freight off your truck in the morning, and repeat the process. Repeat the process keep making money so um we'll be back with this again the next time i'm going to show you the opposite how to get this the smaller miles and bigger money this is money to money we're saving miles here right we went from 522 right. miles to right. 260 miles the next time we do this i'm going to show you the same amount of miles and the money difference red zone to red zone folk Focus on your strategies. This is a, a game of chess. We're not playing checkers here. You don't just take good load and hope. Yeah, get there and hope. No, you should have a strategy. That's what we're trying to tell everybody, and uh, so tune in, and we'll get it. Thanks for stopping by.